Black man sees white neighbor after being falsely accused. That's right. John Marks on the left. Okay. There he is. 40 year old black man has filed civil rights lawsuit against the city of Manville, Texas, and its police officers, alleging he was falsely arrested for sexually assaulting his white neighbor. The lawsuit claims that on November 9, 2023, Marks and his friend, 43 year old Freddie Douglas Jr., in the center, had consensual sex with Amanda Zarusinski, white female neighbor with whom Marks had an ongoing intimate relationship with. In Marx's pool, it happened during a celebration at his new home. All right. Well, the El Campo Leader News reported Zaruzinski, it's probably Zaruzinski, called a police report a week later claiming she was held against her will and that both men sexually violated her or attempted to violate her over a several hour time period that night and into the next morning. Court affidavit stated all three had been drinking. And that the assaults took place with the woman saying no and having to physically fight Douglas off of her. Marx further accuses Zarozinski of malicious prosecution, falsely reporting to the police that she had been sexually assaulted and kidnapped by him, which led to his arrest. Prosecution caused him mental anguish, as well as damage to his personal and professional reputation. Her Atlanta Black Star Marx was arrested December 7th, 2023, charged with aggravated sexual assault. And aggravated kidnapping felonies that can result in prison sentences from five to 99 years. Douglas was also arrested, fired from his job as a police detective in El Campo. Both men were jailed and later released on bond, protesting their innocence. They said, This didn't happen. How did we get here? This is something that I, I can't understand about women. I don't get when they do this. The idea that you will consent to a sexual act and then lie, the lie being so egregious that it could lock these men up forever and they lose everything. Are you that bad of a person or do you feel that disgusted with yourself that you have to fabricate a lie in your head? You have to fabricate events that didn't happen. No, I didn't just get a choo-choo train ran on me. No, they held me down against my will. Are you that disgusted by the act in which you just committed? Because nothing else really makes sense. And look, me personally, when it comes to dating, I don't take race into consideration. I really don't. I think there are so many other factors that I value more, right? But there is something to be said about this dynamic. And the people in the comments, especially the women, they are calling this out. They're dropping the well, well, wells. They're dropping the when are they going to learn? Because we all know that white women using the powers that may be against black men is a story as old as time. And unfortunately for these men, they can sue, they can whatever the case is, but they'll never get their livelihood back. I recently backslid on my walk. I recently messed up, fell short, whatever you want to call it. Quick little story time. I went on a trip to Jamaica for a week and <laughs> by the end of it, I felt like my old self. I'll be so real. I've been on this walk so strong for so long, but people don't talk about how hard it is to remain holy when you're out of your normal routine, when sin is literally placed in a box right in front of you, where sin is knocking, temptation is knocking on the door. Now, I want to talk about the first mistake I made. The first mistake I made is that I had a nudging, I had an urging from the Holy Spirit not to go on this trip. <laughs> and me, I ignored it. I was like, nah, the holiday's paid. I want to go, I want to enjoy myself. But something in my spirit was telling me, do not go on this trip. And this is lesson number one. Do not ignore the nudging of the Holy Spirit. Because before anything usually happens bad in your life, trust me, the Holy Spirit will tell you. And if you ignore those red flags, you can't be mad at the consequences that came after. Number two, do not allow your pride to come in. This was me. I'll be fine. I'm two years deep. I ain't going to drink. I ain't going to smoke. I ain't going to speak to man like that. I'm going to remain holy. When I think about it now, I'm thinking, girl, be so for real. Now, let me give you a few reasons why I knew it wasn't beneficial for my walk. Because one, I wasn't going with any of my saved friends. So, so one, there was no accountability there. There's always to tell me, Yans, don't be doing this. Don't do that. And before I knew it, because of the environment and stuff like that, before you knew it, I was drinking. Before you knew it, <laughs> I'm smoking weed. Before you knew it, do you know what I mean? I'm speaking to man. Like, all these little things. And it's like, that it was a secular music which I was listening to, like, just non-stop throughout the whole trip. 
And so by the end of the trip, I come back and I felt so ashamed. Not only were people talking to me, yeah, making me feel even worse about myself. Like, I was just like, Jan, how could you, how could, like, how did we get here? Like, how did we actually get here? Do you know what I mean? The condemnation was so heavy. I was out of TikTok for weeks on end because I just thought, I can't come on here and be a fraud. I can't come on here and encourage people and talk about Jesus when I'm not living the life which I'm encouraging people to do but let me tell you one thing. Let me just, this was the turning point. Let me tell you why I love Christianity so bad. Let me tell you why I love Jesus so bad. Because when I, the second I got here. Because you can do whatever you want. And Jesus will forgive you, right? Growing up in a Christian island. This is all you see. People doing deviant demonic acts. Jesus will forgive me. <laughs> I repent. How about not do it in the first place? Huh? How about not do it in the first place? No, no. Let's hear what you love about Christianity. The fact that you can do anything you want, right? But the fact that there's no rules, right? Okay. When I, the second I got here, the second I opened the Bible, the first thing I was thinking, Lord, right? I'm going to get some chastising from Jesus. You know, he's going to cuss me down. But guess what? He didn't shade me. He didn't accuse me. The first thing that I read, the topic of the Bible, it was about restoration. God didn't point out to me instantly, what did you do? The first thing he said to me was, right, how are we going to get back on track? He said, this is not you. <laughs> I just remember bawling my eyes out on this bed because it just made me realise that you could be the biggest sinner, you could mess up 10,000 times and God will still look at you and still think, that is my daughter and she's still righteous. No matter what anybody says, no matter, no, no matter whatever opinion other people think about me and how I acted there, God still loves me. And my mind even went back to when Adam first sinned in the garden. He didn't first say, what did you do? He says, where are you? And you know why he said, where are you? Because even in those weeks where I was feeling condemnation, I didn't want to open my Bible. I was like, nah, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready. I'm not. I was putting that distance in between God. And this is exactly what sin does. Sin puts the distance. He puts the gap. It puts the separation between you and God, making you feel like you can't go to him, that you're so dirty, you're so bad, that you can't come to him. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. No matter what you've done, God never, ever wants separation from you. All he ever wants you to do is just to come back. Like the product son story he just came back like the children of israel they just came back time and time again my mind went back to genesis when time and time again the israelites would go away and then god would forgive them they go away god i need to think what is wrong with these people but it is literally the epitome of how we are we go back and then we come back i've had enough i've had enough you willingly booked a trip to jamaica knowing you were gonna get bust down by the b b See, you knew it in your heart of hearts, in your soul of soul. You done it. Now you feel bad. Now you're talking about Jesus will forgive you. Give me a break. This is why, for me personally, I don't know about you guys. I'm so against women who have turned to the back. If she's turned to religion, all of a sudden she's celibate. You're for the, I already know what you are. I put you to the side. Okay, because these types of women will live the most sinful lives in the guise of God will always forgive. Okay. All right. Wait, is it Old Testament God? Oh, 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 no, right? Uh, okay, cool. Okay, story time about how this nigga left me at the airport and now I'm sitting here waiting for my other nigga to come pick me up. So I came to see this one dude because he been wanting me to come see him. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. I'll hop on a flight. It's nothing. So I get on the airplane on my layover. I'm talking to him and me and him kind of got into it because... He be acting like a little girl. So whatever, I'm telling him, like, okay, are you going to be there to pick me up at the airport? Like, I don't give a fuck about your attitude, but you know, you knew I was coming. And he's like, um, I'll be there or maybe I won't be there. And I'm like, what the fuck you mean you'll be there or maybe you won't be there? Like, don't start acting stupid. I'm going to a whole different state to see you. I could have rented my own car if that was the case. Like, don't have me outside looking stupid. Y'all guess where I'm at? Outside looking stupid. So I had hopes that this nigga wasn't going to be a fucking idiot. Y'all, so I get off the plane or whatever. I'm like, I'm texting him like, okay, I'm about to go get my bags. He's like, all right, bet. So I go down the back of the plane, I get my bags, and he's like, I'm outside. Do y'all think he here? Y'all think he here? But I'm about to let one monkey don't stop no show. You feel me? So now I'm like, that's fine. I got hoes in different area codes. So now I'm thinking quick on my feet because now I'm sitting outside. I'm like, I'm about to, okay, I'm not tripping. I'm about to just get me an Uber and I'm about to just go get a room because who's broke so whatever 
now I'm about to get me an Uber. And then I ended up texting my other dude and I'm like, uh, surprise, I'm here. So now I'm sitting here waiting for my Uber and the other nigga is blowing my phone up talking about where you at. Not coming to see you. Don't this sound like I'm an? You know, remove the fact that somebody's coming to pick her up, right? She got to tell you she ain't broke because that's the first thing. She got to flex. She got to show you I'm up. I'm that. You know what I'm saying? I'm that. Okay. Then she got to tell you that she got all the hoes. <laughs> she got all the hoes. One don't pick up. I got her next one on the line. That sounds like a man. The fact that you guys were arguing and you were on the way to go to another state and you're arguing when you're on the way. Red flag. You may be coming on here flexing, but unless that man has no self-respect, he dodged a bullet. He really did. Somebody call C. P. S. Only six years old? Only six? Who is doing this to this child? Not only should CPS be called. Firstly, why are you even videoing this? This is whoever's doing this needs to be locked up. Honestly, because this is this is abuse. This is disgusting. And I'm not talking about a six-year-old. I'm talking about the people who are doing this. This is crazy. I think we can all agree there's various forms of abuse, you know, physical, emotional, psychological. Well, this is also a form of abuse. Listen, I don't agree with the normalization of obesity with adults, but with kids, it's just another level. That six-year-old girl can't even be a child. She can't even be a six-year-old girl. She can't run around. She can't play with her friends. She can barely climb some fucking stairs. Did you see her try to climb the stairs? The poor girl could barely do it. Her knees and ankles are probably screaming with her attempt to climb some stairs. And I'm sure we've all heard this garbage statement that somebody like this girl's parents would say, we're all big, we're just big boned. Listen, there's no such thing as a big boned gene. You don't just become obese because you're big boned. It's the actions or lack of action, so to say, that accumulate over time that have a certain result. Now, unfortunately, when this girl grows older, she's going to believe she's naturally big boned because she's been morbidly obese her whole life. Honestly, as parents, we need to make the best decisions possible for the kids and their health because health dictates the quality of life. Girl, if you don't just go out there and get that man's name tattered on you, I'm sorry, but I'm a girl. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care. Yes, I've had five names on me. Five names on me. One is on my face. One is on my face. Just go get the tattoo. Just make sure you don't get red like me. I found out that red is going to be hard to get removed, but go get that fucking man's tat that that fucking man's name tatted. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck cuz the perks that come after 2024, man. You know, we got a bunch of women with mental health issues walking around. Five. Five. I guarantee there's at least like one or two of them that didn't even want you to do it as well. Just. Oh my God, it's gracious. Got me and get my zone. Now I'm blowing up your phone. Blowing weed smoke in the ozone. Just let me know For some reason I just can't let this go 